5 Benefits of Praying in Tongues In this video, we're talking about the private prayer language that you can pray through the Holy Spirit in tongues not the one talked about in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 where it is the gift of tongues that is to be spoken in public We're talking about in private prayer to God and this is what Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 This is why you want to do it Verse 5, Paul says, I wish you all spoke with tongues In 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 18, Paul says, I thank my God I speak with tongues more than you all and then of course he says yet yeah, in the church i want you to speak intelligible words with understanding so people can be edified sometimes people look at the scripture and say well see paul says i'd rather you be prophesying instead of speaking in tongues but that's not what he says he says i want you to all speak with tongues and i also want to let you know that i speak with tongues more than you all so do it don't forbid praying tongues but when you're in the church when you're in a public setting do prophesy so other people can be edified in this video we're talking about your private prayer language these are the five benefits when you pray in the holy Spirit and tongues. Number one, you will build up your inner man. You're going to edify yourself because in 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 2, it says, For he who speaks in the tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the spirit he speaks mysteries. Verse 4, he who speaks in the tongue edifies himself, but he who prophesies edifies the church. So of course, if you're in a church setting, you want to prophesy, encourage the body, but if you're by yourself, you're alone praying, seeking the Lord in your private prayer closet one of the best ways you can seek the lord is through praying in tongues because paul says we are building up ourselves we're speaking mysteries that we don't even understand but we're speaking unto god so if you currently feel that you need some encouragement you want to build up your faith this is the one of the best ways to do it by praying in tongues speaking unto god let the holy spirit speak through you and pray through you the second benefit of praying in tongues is that you get to experience the presence of god how many of you have once said god i want to experience your presence i want to draw closer to you if that's you you want to pray in tongues because in romans chapter 8 verse 26 it says likewise the spirit also helps in our weaknesses for we do not know what we should pray as we ought but the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered i cannot tell you how many times when i'm praying in tongues seeking god in my private prayer closet i'm just praying god i'm just in my mind have these thoughts but i'm actually praying out of my words in tongues in a language that i don't even know what it is it's a heavenly language it's the holy spirit praying through me and, and as I start getting into it, as I pray more and more pressing into it, I start getting louder, sometimes a little bit lower. And as I start pressing in, I just feel something take over me. And I know it is the Holy Spirit because it is so holy. That moment, sometimes you weep, sometimes you cry, sometimes you have a picture in your mind, you're praying for somebody else. Sometimes it's thoughts that the Holy Spirit has given you, things that you know that you probably won't want to say or do because it's, it's such a big commitment. And yet God's saying, pray through Emmanuel, pray through him because I want this to be evident in his life. And so if you want to experience the presence of God, sometimes you can do it through prayer and worship. Sometimes you can put on your favorite worship music, your favorite brand, or if you're in church, you're worshiping God, that is good. You can experience coming to the atmosphere of God, worshiping him. But another way to come into the presence of God is through praying the Holy Spirit. It's because the Holy Spirit is taking over. When you yield your tongue, yield your mouth, and you just speak it, and you just speak it and you pray, the Holy Spirit then takes over and he prays through you and and you encounter the presence of God. It's so important for you to do that. Sometimes you're just reading the Bible while praying in tongues and all of a sudden, a verse that normally wouldn't make you feel the sense of a presence, of an urgency of the gospel, of the presence of God, all of a sudden you start feeling it. It's because the Holy Spirit is praying through you and you're crying for the lost. You're, you're weeping for the sins of the world, even for your own sins. And then you start feeling the forgiveness of God. You start feeling the presence of God. Now, I'm not reducing the Holy Spirit to just some kind of emotionalism, but you have to also understand that our faith is not void of any emotions. It's the same thing like you and your wife or you and your husband. When you're in that marriage, not every single moment is going to be oh so emotional. You feel this fuzzy, warm feeling. But at the same time, it's also not void of any emotions. You ask anyone who's happily married, they'll tell you, oh, I feel emotions for my spouse because that's how a relationship is created to be. The same thing it is with God. Sometimes we feel them. If you want to get into more of that presence, experience his heart, sometimes I'm like, God, show me your heart. What's on your heart today? And I start praying in tongues and I start just really pressing in going after it and many times it's after a half an hour to almost an hour then you start to really flow into the things of the spirit and then you start feeling the heart of God you start praying you weep you dance you you just experience God in that tangible way that you never are able to experience if you're just sitting there and just 
maybe read the Bible. Number three, the third benefit of praying in tongues is to receive supernatural warnings from God. And you can hear a lot of testimonies of people talking about this, but I can tell you personally, there are times when I'm praying in tongues, seeking God, and I go to bed and I have a dream. And the dream would give me a warning. One time, it was a warning about this dream. It was personal. It was for my family. Something that was going to be some kind of an accident for my daughter. And I perceived that to be symbolism of certain things that are happening in our lives. And so when I woke up, I told my wife, I say, hey, this is the dream that I had. I think the Holy Spirit is trying to warn us. And so my wife and I, we come into agreement with a certain situation. We say, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over this situation. I break the power of the evil one. And every attack of the demonic, I break the power in Jesus' name. I speak life. I speak protection. I speak the guidance of God in our lives that we will not walk into the trap of the evil one, but we'll walk into the calling and the destiny of God. But let me ask you something. When was the last time you felt like there's something that you could have avoided? Maybe, oh man, if I pray more, if I sought the Lord, maybe I wouldn't have gotten myself into this deal. Maybe I wouldn't have gotten myself into this situation, this conversation, this particular situation. If you sought the Lord, if you sought God in His presence. And sometimes I'm telling you, when you pray in tongues, the Holy Spirit prays through you and He's praying for the situation that you don't even know in your mind, but the Holy Spirit knows. And so when you're praying in tongues, God helps you avoid certain of tragedies or certain accidents that you might have not known yourself other than praying in tongues. So do it and implement this in your life. Number four, the fourth benefit is to receive guidance from the Holy Spirit. Not only do you get warnings and to avoid certain things that are bad, but now you're getting the positive. You're having the Holy Spirit lead you onto a path that you may not know that's best for you, but He's leading you onto that way. In Acts chapter 13, verse 2, it says, As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, Now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So as they're fasting, as they're praying, guess what Paul's doing? A large part of his time, I can imagine, is probably praying in tongues. As they're doing that, as they're fasting and seeking the Lord, Holy Spirit says, Hey, I'm going to separate from myself Barnabas and Saul for the work which I've called them to do. And later on in Acts chapter 16, verse 6 to 10, it says, Now when they had gone through Phyalgia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. After they had come to Mysia, they tried to go into Bithynia, but the Spirit did not permit them. So passing by Mysia, they came to Troas, and a vision appeared to Paul in the night, a man in Macedonia stood and pleaded with him saying, come over to Macedonia and help us. Now after we had seen his vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Did you know that there's certain things that you can do in your Christian life? That is good. It's not really bad. As you see in this example here, Paul was going to go preach the gospel to these regions. It's good. Jesus says, go and preach the gospel to all nations. But you know that there's a specific call of God, specific will of God in your life and in my life. And as we go and step out to do the general call, the general will of God in our lives, preaching the gospel, healing the sick, casting out demons, and telling people to repent. As we do that, the Holy Spirit gives us specific guidance, specific calling to the general will of God, just like here in Paul. Why did the Holy Spirit tell him not to go to these regions? Well, because the Holy Spirit says, you should go to Macedonia, because he gave him a vision saying, Paul, go here instead. When you pray in tongues and you encounter the supernatural through praying in the supernatural language of God, you get visions, you get dreams. God will guide you on a path that you might not have known unless you sought the Lord in praying in the Holy Spirit and praying in tongues. The fifth benefit of praying in tongues is you can enter into a deeper prayer life with God. How many times have you tried to pray and you're praying in words, oh God, I pray for this, pray for my family, pray for the missionary, I pray for the church, and you look at the clock, it's like five minutes, ten minutes have gone by because you're praying in words. You're thinking this must have been a long time, but it's only been a few minutes. Well, let me tell you, when you're praying in tongues, when you put on some worship music, you just go, you just keep praying, praying, praying in the Holy Spirit and the words just start coming out of you and then all of a sudden you have an idea. You have a person you haven't thought of for a long time. This has happened. There's one time I was praying in tongues just maybe a few weeks ago. All of a sudden, I thought of this person in Hong Kong that I met uh, several years ago in a church setting of these friends, okay? And I don't even really know this guy that well, but through praying in tongues, all of a sudden, this person came into my mind and I had to go and look up his Facebook. I haven't talked to him for a long time and I say, hey, listen, I recently thought about you and by the way, I didn't even go contact him right away. I actually waited a day or two, but then th this impression in my heart after praying in tongues has been pretty hard. So I feel like the Holy Spirit wants me to reach out to him. So I reached out to him and say, listen, 
I thought about you in the past couple days. I feel that God wants me to give you these encouragements. So I told him specific things. And to be honest, I don't know if he's going to respond to me or not. Because when I look at his timeline on his Facebook, he hasn't posted for like a year or two. No new posts. I don't even know if he's using his Facebook account anymore. But he did reply to me and he says, thank you. Thanks for the encouragement. Something very short, very simple. But hey, I reached out to somebody that the Holy Spirit wants me to reach out to. I wouldn't have thought about him if I was in praying tongues and seeking the Lord. And this person just popped into my mind. So next time when you're praying, sometimes God wants you to pray for someone. Maybe it's your family member, a friend you haven't talked to for a long time. Maybe it's someone that you don't even know across the world. I've heard of testimonies of someone being woke up by the Holy Spirit in the middle of the night. They start praying the Holy Spirit, interceding. And they found out later that they're praying for this missionary who is about to be killed by the tribal people that they're ministering to. And God saved this missionary through the praying tongues of this person who was obedient and got up in the middle of the night and prayed for this missionary. And so if you want to go deeper in your prayer, if you want God to lead your prayer, be spirit-led in your prayer, do this pray in tongues. Now, I'm not saying that praying in tongues is the only way to pray. Of course not. There's different types of prayer. We worship God. We meditate on His Word. We read the Bible. We just say nothing. We become silent. There's so many different ways to pray. Jesus also showed us very effective ways to pray and what to say and the attitude that we should have. So if you want to go into deeper prayer life, yes, pray in tongues, but also go and watch this video where I talk about the 12 effective keys in prayer. If you want your prayers answered, if you want God to hear you and pray in the right way that pleases God, you gotta go watch this video right here where I talk about the 12 effective keys that you can implement in your prayer life today. Go ahead and click like on this video. Share with people who need to hear it. And if you need healing in your body, you need deliverance from yourself, from demons, go post in the comments below. I'd love to minister to you. Until next time, share the gospel and be blessed in Jesus' name. God bless you.